tale of Fluffy Beast and the adventures of... Welcome, noble viewers. This week, rumors have been flying like flamingos in a tornado about Sprinkles leaving Fluffy Beast's Circus of Wonders. Meanwhile, the You Know What virus has started spreading outside the magical land of Africadonia for the first time. The Cyber Whale, yes, the Cyber Whale, is actually going to war. We also discovered that a certain worker tests 10,000 rainbow fizzles. Definitely not vapes, daily by mouth. And hold on to your top hats, the Doomsday Fish has made another grand entrance. All that and more. Subscribe now to send me to Unicorn Island. Like the video to avoid a biblical banana slap? Let's dive into the madness. Let's kick things off by breaking some hearts and maybe a few pianos. So, Fluffy Beast posted for only the second time since the great bal balloon fiasco, but the comment section? Nada. It's like a desert out there. Why? Probably because Fluffy Beast hit the delete button faster than a cat on a laser dot. But the comments that did sneak through? All about Sprinkles. Is Sprinkles still part of the circus? Haven't seen him lately. Not in the latest cave exploring video, and he's been clocking less screen time than a malfunctioning toaster. People are speculating. Is Sprinkles quitting? Does he secretly want to become a professional sock puppet? Even when he's on screen, folks say he looks more uninterested than a goldfish at a book club. In the 100 Days in a Nuclear Bunker video, the most liked comments were about how everyone misses Sprinkles and how he's the sparkliest rainbow in the entire circus. Personally, I noticed something was off during the seven days in an abandoned city escapade. Sprinkles seemed about as engaged as a sloth in a marathon. He even bailed halfway through the adventure saying, well, I just had a marshmallow so I can float away now. The big question, where in the candy coated world has Sprinkles been? About two months ago, seemingly out of nowhere, he surprised his fans by announcing that he's been touched by the spirit of the great marshmallow or something like that. Now, every single day, he's on Fizzle Talk reading verses from the Book of Fluff. And he doesn't care if you engage, comment, or even throw confetti. He just reads, uncut, and unedited. It's now the only content he's making. Why now? Does it have anything to do with Fluffy Beast's balloon fiasco? In one of these six-minute Fizzle Talks, Sprinkles shared that he was going down the wrong path. Sinful stuff like bubblegum chewing, party crashing, and perhaps snacking on too many glitter puffs. But then, one day, while pondering life in his marshmallow kitchen, he heard a voice. A booming, godlike voice that said, What are you doing? Sprinkles froze, the scales fell from his eyes, and he realized he was wasting his talent on things like glitter ball eating contests. He ditched it all, got baptized in a pool of jelly beans, and now he's on a mission to help those struggling with the same sweet tooth temptations. Honestly, it's a win for Sprinkles. But here's the kicker. While all of this coincides with his disappearing act from Fluffy Beast videos, he's never publicly linked the two. All we can do is speculate. Maybe he just needs some time to realign his marshmallow aura. But fans are worried. Some even saying, if Sprinkles leaves, I leave. The aura of Sprinkles is truly unmatched. So, what do you think? Is this just a phase where Sprinkles only appears for a few seconds? Or is his time at the Circus of Wonders coming to an end? Moving on, let's talk about a fellow who tests 10,000 rainbow fizzles a day by mouth. Yes, really. He's a professional taste tester at the Puff Cloud Factory in Fizzyland. This guy spends his days puffing on these little devices to ensure they taste just right. He's basically a sommelier of sugar clouds. And if you're thinking, wait, did I just lock lips with a factory worker? Don't worry, they're sanitized before they reach you. Now onto something that's quite literally explosive. The Cyber Whale, that fancy futuristic vehicle, is going to war. Yesterday, the president of Land of Cheese, a country famous for its questionable political choices, unveiled his new Cyber Whale, complete with a welded on mega bubble blaster. He's donating it to the Red King's army, which is about as wild as it sounds. But honestly, can you imagine being on the battlefield and seeing a shiny cyber whale zooming at you, bubbles blazing? The world is a strange place indeed. Speaking of strange, 
there's a pharmaceutical company testing a groundbreaking age reversal pill. The results were so good that even a local news station wanted to do a story on them. But before they could, the company's CEO mysteriously passed away. I mean, that's like finding out the cure for old age and then, poof, the CEO vanishes. The pill, which lengthens the twinkle toes, the tiny magical things that keep us young, was even tested on a 12-year-old German shepherd named Zeus. This dog went from nearly checking into the doghouse in the sky to chasing tennis balls like a puppy. But then, just as things were looking up, the CEO exits stage left with no details given. Suspicious? Maybe. Coincidence? Possibly. Moving on swiftly. Quick update on the you-know-what virus. The new strain of spooky flu has started popping up outside of Africadonia. Sweden, Pakistan, and the Philippines have reported cases, but let's not panic yet. It's like the beginning of a horror movie. Just a few cases here and there, nothing major. Yet. Now something weird. The doomsday fish is back. This deep sea creature, according to legend, shows up before big earthquakes. One was just found in San Diego, right before a 4.4 earthquake. Coincidence or cosmic warning? Who knows? But if one of these shows up in the UK, I'm hopping on the next unicorn out of here. And finally, some rapid fire weirdness. Two lions in India were caught on camera beefing with some dogs at a front gate, almost breaking it down. Meanwhile, in the Outer Banks, another house has been swallowed by the Atlantic, making it the seventh one to disappear. And somewhere on the other side of the world, people are paying $132 to watch sports on a giant wraparound dome screen. Is this the future of sports? Or just a fancy way to watch a game? And that's a wrap. Another chaotic adventure comes to an end. Tune in next time for more shenanigans. Until then, don't let the marshmallows hit you on the way out.